back to calculus 3 and in this part we are going to work on 6.2 line integrals and if you are following the textbook hopefully you see there are two kinds of line integrals covered on the textbook scalar line integrals and the vector line integrals indeed for our purpose we are only going to consider vector line integrals okay vector line integrals and then you may wonder why do we consider vector line integrals or so mostly we simply consider that's a line integral basically in physics the work done by a force when an object moves along a curve in that force field can be calculated as a line integral as a line integral so maybe i'm going to move a little back to this yeah this is the force field or maybe let's look at the gravity field just consider the part with the red arrows because everything is attracted to the earth by the gravity so the f object when it's the object getting closer to the earth uh, the gravity is stronger the gravity is stronger okay so that's a gravity field and then imagine if we have something big if we have something big moving around the earth and along any curve or maybe we have a satellite moving around the earth and certainly the gravity has a role the gravity uh, will do the work on the sa satellite or any object uh, running around and moving around rotate around the earth okay and then the work done by the force by the gravity on a certain curve around the around the earth okay in the back in the gravity field any force field like in this force field any kind of curve always can be found as the line integral and the line integral it is written as f dot dr and uh, this little dot well i hope you remember this f it is a vector field right it's a vector or it is a curve that's also vector value function believe it or not but that is a vector value function with one single variable so that's a curve so this is a vector dot with a vector and then how do we understand such an integral and so in the two-dimensional case the vector field has two components p and q and the curve also has two components so f dot d on along a curve in the two-dimensional case is simply it is in the fashion of p dx plus q dy it's a line integral and then we will go a little bit further and you will see how do we calculate an integral line integral like this the idea is that you want to keep in mind that we cannot separate the dx and dy and this entire thing will have to be evaluated all together that's a single integral that is a line integral okay then similarly in the three-dimensional case the line integral the vector field has three components p q r and the same for the curve x y z x y z and then the line integral it is calculated as p dx plus q dy plus r dz don't take this as three separate integrals uh, these three are part they are just parts of a single integral it will they will have to be evaluated all together okay so let's take a quick look what do i how do we calculate the line integral so this is from textbook example 6.18 okay we are having a line integral in this fashion and indeed in this case it's given clearly the curve it is given as a semicircle cosine t sine t and it is half of a circle because t is running from 0 to pi if we are having t running from 0 to 2 pi that's the entire circle and the vector field it is negative y and x so according to the discussion as we did earlier it really should be calculated as pdx qdy so this is my arrangement the line integral f dot dr really it is the integral of pdx plus qdy 
P, as we just given here, it's the component x component of the vector field. That's negative y. dx, let's say at the moment, it stays as it is. Then plus q, q it is the y component. That's x, x dy. So this is the line integral we need to consider. Then for dx part, I hope you know the line integral, there are two vectors, right? The vector field and the curve. And the curve has an x component, y component. So I'm saying x is cosine t, y is sine t. Accordingly, dx it is negative sine t dt, y dy it is cosine t dt. Okay, and now according to what we just covered, this line integral in the fashion of p dx q dy. P, it is negative y, and the dx, it is, right here, right? Negative sine t dt, and also y is, co y is sine t. So, I mean, uh, it is negative sine t times parentheses negative sine t dt. And then x dy, x is cosine t, but dy is cosine t dt. So those two parts, they simply turn to be an integral in terms of t only. And dt, dt, really they are for the same integral. So we can take out this dt, make them as a single one. And also in this special case, we do have the integrand as cosine squared plus sine squared. And this is the single integral in terms of t. And it is derived from the so-called vector integral, or specifically that's a line integral, line, line integral here. Okay. And also for this special example, it turns out to be the situation we are having cosine squared plus sine squared, which is just one for any t. So the integral, it is the integral one with respect to t. So it is t, and then you plug in the upper bound, plug in the lower bound, do a subtraction, that's pi. So in this case, if this f indeed it is a vector field, or it is a curve, if we are having object moving along this curve, and then the work done by this vector field, by the force, it is pi. It is pi. So this is the beginning part of the discussion of a line integral. A vector line integral, usually when we say a line integral, we consider that's a vector line integral. Let's take a break. Thank you for watching.